Hey everybody, good morning. It is Pete. Today is Wednesday, May 27, 2020. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Uh, first off, I want to start out by saying thank you to everybody who sends me emails or leaves comments below the videos. It actually gives me some really good information into uh, what are the biggest things that are your challenges right now, what are your goals, and um, what kind of little tweaks I can offer in future videos to, uh, to help do that, uh, accomplish those goals and overcome those challenges. Uh, believe it or not, overcoming uh, the challenges of losing money is absolutely the first and best goal that you should have because there's a, there's a learning curve in trading where you're losing, 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 you're losing less, you get to a break even level, and then you come out on the other side and then your biggest problem is um, actually learning how to hold your winning trades longer, how to manage winning trades. Uh, unfortunately for most traders though is they don't want to admit that that first part of the curve exists and they take on too much risk uh, and ultimately don't give themselves the opportunity to get trading experience. You know, it's kind of like uh, getting in a car and driving really um, aggressively the first couple of times you drive and you crash the car uh, and now you actually don't learn how to drive. Uh, you need more experience in rain and snow and night and day and crowded traffic and open roads and trading is exactly the same way. So the way that I actually word it um, in the coaching program is you have to learn first how to not lose money and make this big list of what doesn't work, which means you need to be diligent in your trading journal. I know uh, people hear trading journal and eyes gloss over, but really it's the most important trading book you'll ever read or, or, or uh, be involved with. Um, because that's personal to you. It's, it, it comes with your experience, your goals, your resources, your skills at that point. Uh, and nobody can take that away from you. Like that, that is exactly what you need to learn right now. Those are exactly the feedback lessons from your own trading, which by the way, trading is the most beautiful feedback loop you will ever experience in your life. If you know anything um, about scientific method, it's basically test put it out there and get feedback, test, put it out there and get feedback. And when you think about your own personal trading, which that's exactly how I see mine, every single trade that I get out of, I talk about <clears throat> to myself and, and I do still keep a journal. I have the journal here right on my desk every single day. You need to have feedback with yourself for, okay, did I do what I was supposed to? If I did or didn't, what does that mean? And how does that help me improve? And especially in that beginning part, of when you're still trying to figure out how to make money every single month. Now remember, I said every single month. What we talk about here is, uh, sure, a lot, of the, a lot of the glory goes to day trading, but I wanna make this clear. Every single thing that I do is first and foremost a trade that I would swing trade, a trade that I would hold for a little bit longer period of time. Uh, if, and those are the stocks that I would happen to day trade because I, if I wouldn't hold it tomorrow, why would I hold it today? Uh, wow, I just came up with that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but um, I, I want to make it clear. So a lot of people think I only day trade, and that's not the case. Uh, the, the, the program, the, the structure, the way that I trade and the way I teach and coach is first and foremost designed for holding trades longer. And if you happen to want to day trade that on a particular day, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. However, I do want to talk about something today, which is actually the main topic of today's video, which is risk reward. And it kind of drives me a little bit crazy sometimes when, when I get emails or start working with somebody new um, who picks this reward number out of their head and said, I, I'm only going to take a trade that's three to one risk reward, which yes, absolutely good concept. 100% good concept. Oh, by the way, if you like these videos, please click down, give us a thumbs up and um, absolutely subscribe so you get updates. Um, so anyway, the, the reward part of risk reward is fascinating to me because most people who are new, most people who don't have a strategy, uh, most people who don't have an edge understand that you need solid risk reward that makes sense. So over the long run, you become, a, you are a profitable trader. Um, but the problem is <laughs> if you don't have an edge, you have no idea what are the odds of actually hitting the four. <laughs> so if you say four to one risk reward ratio, that means that you're expecting four to be a really good possibility of happening. So you, you want to risk a dollar on it, you know, you want to get in at 20, you're going to risk a dollar down to 19, expecting to get out of 24. But what are the odds of actually hitting 24? What are the odds of making that $4 profit? That's the magic in trading. The magic in trading is actually setting up what I call trade expectation, which is the odds of your reward being reached 
versus the odds of your stop loss being reached. And there's many ways to do that, but first and foremost, I just wanna make sure that that concept is, is really a core part of everything that you do. When you look at a chart, and obviously the, the, the phraseology that I use, we call it order flow. And that goes back to what I had my trading floor in New York City, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for many reasons. But if you look at a chart, instead of just saying a trend, that because bec after a while, you know, kind of gets, it doesn't mean the same thing as there's actual buy and sell orders behind that. And, you, and when you say order flow, you're now kind of putting into the equation are those buy and sell orders still strong? How long have those buy and sell orders been going on? How recently have the buy and sell orders been uh, active or obvious? In other words, how many days in a row has it been what I call well bid? Uh, and what are the odds of those well bid candlesticks if you want to buy something? Uh, what are the odds of that following through? So in other words, if you want to be long, yes. Excuse me, if you want to be long, um, now, which we call pick a side, picking a side and then picking a spot is the second part of it. And the entry is not as relevant. Of course, it's important, but it's not as relevant to the odds of it following through. So anytime you're looking at a chart that I, I implore you to get to the point where you're saying to yourself, okay, yeah, I see the trade. I see the idea. I definitely want to be a buyer or a seller of this stock and in, in, in a seller, meaning a short seller. Then take it one step deeper. And, and if I could really give you some wisdom, some, some experience and stuff that I lost a lot, you know, I lost money on when I first started trading that I didn't know, is you really have to ask yourself, what are the odds of it moving further? So we're gonna just look at a couple of different examples um, where it was obvious the stock was a buy, but it was also obvious that the odds of making sufficient money for the risk you had to take at that moment didn't matter. So in other words, the risk might have been $2, but the profit potential was only $2. And that's a break-even trade. And you take break-even trades, you're going to be a break-even trader. So really the point that I want to get across here is most hardworking, smart traders struggle because they don't go deep enough in the questions they ask about whether or not it's a good trade. And I'm not getting crazy complicated here. It's really just, okay, if I want to be long, or long mean buyer, some trader terminology there, what are the odds of that stock continuing to justify the risk I have to accept for the trade? That's all. But ask as many things as you can on the chart to determine if it's a good trade now. Now, the two biggest things for a buying opportunity, and we'll take a look at two quick examples. Um, the two biggest things are how far has the stock already moved recently? And that's the big thing recently over the last daily candlesticks, how many daily candlesticks in a row are what I call well-bid? And well-bid is higher highs and higher lows. How did those stocks close? Was it well-bid and it closed on the highs for four, five, six days in a row? Or was it well-bid and it closed on the lows? There's a big difference in those two types of closes. And if I look to the left, how far has this stock moved compared to what it normally does? Again, you don't have to get too complicated. It's interesting. One of the biggest questions I get is understanding how to book profits, understanding knowing when to book profits. And really, it doesn't need to be more complicated than look to the left on the chart and say, when this stock has a bullish rally, in the case of a move to the upside, what does the smart money push it to? How far does the smart money make the stock go from here to here, typically? Of course, there's gonna be abnormal black swan type moves where it's gonna move further than you expect. But by far, the easiest way to do that is look to the left and say, okay, when this stock has a bullish rally, it goes up, pauses, and then has another push, what does it normally do? Oh, look to the left every time it moves $10. Well, where did your current move start? That's what you're going to have a base of. That's where it should go. Now, obviously, I'm talking about trading for cash flow. I'm talking about building monthly income, which is kind of what I specialize in. Uh, if you're holding trades a little bit longer between earnings seasons, you might determine you want to hold the trade from one earnings season to the next and maybe get out just prior to the earnings. Completely a whole different strategy. That's not what we're talking about today. But So those are two ways to really determine. But the, the final piece is actually looking to the left, and we're going to specifically talk about Square, and we're going to talk about Penn, uh, Penn National Gaming, where they were clearly good bullish moves off of the April uh, March lows but then came up to resistance levels where the stock had one more day maybe of move to the upside. And what I call um, specifically in this case uh, of, of uh, Penn, 
um, where it was a saturation play where it, I was looking for it to open into a certain level and find sellers come in and profit taking. If you don't, um, uh, if you don't believe me, go back to yesterday's video of um, best stock picks for uh, May 26. I literally talked about it at 6.30 yesterday morning, uh, three hours before the market opened. So I'm just going to take two quick uh, charts just so you can get an understanding. And you can print out those charts for yourself. Uh, and then if you have any questions, absolutely follow up uh, in the comments. Um, so here's an interesting one in Square. Obviously, we were, we were um, bullish here. And over here, we actually said that there was only one more day left in the trade to the long side, meaning it was definitely a long, um, but the stock has had a hard time getting through this price. And you can see going all the way back to early 2019, and actually, wow, all the way into 2018, I could probably even extend this, where this is kind of the right price. It hasn't been able to get through there. Now, this was obviously pre-pandemic here. We were above it just a little bit. But what's interesting and what I do all the time is you can see I didn't draw the line up here. And if you're new to the channel, the reason I do that is I want to look at a chart and say, what is the real price it's struggling to get through? Not where up here where it traded one day. It couldn't get through here, tried to get through here, and immediately came back in, failed again three times over here. So as we were approaching it over here, we had this really nice uh, trade, which um, – was very profitable, quite honestly. There's really no other way to say it in, in, our, in our trading community. Uh, it was a really good two-day trade for cash flow where we were looking for this strong stock that had three week closes in a row to test the previous day's low. We just got an amazing entry and a nice rally. But then after that, we said, well, what are the odds of follow through? What is, the, what is, how is it even worth it holding the next day when every time we get up to this price, we can't get through? And you can see now one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row, we can't get above there again. So that kind of illustrates it in a really interesting way. And now Penn is another one where we actually started to see massive volume come into the stock um, after a nice rally, right? So we started to see a nice rally, not quite exhaustion yet, but certainly close to it. Exhaustion typically would be a lot more momentum days and a little bit more order flow. Um, but what I do want to call out here is that we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row of closing above the open. Sure, it's related to the pandemic. Sure, it's related to the market opening. This is a little bit more of a regional gaming community, not so much Las Vegas type thing. But the odds of following through, you can see here prior to the pandemic, we had a very hard time getting through this level. We got through it after earnings back here in um, it was this, uh, February, beginning of February. Uh, but that's the only time the stock recently has been able to get up there. So as we traveled up with the average trade to what the stock was normally doing, the swing trade wasn't worth it anymore. So yesterday morning I was calling out if this stock opens higher, which I'm fully expecting it to do, it opened up in the 3260 area, if I'm not mistaken. The odds of following through uh, 3287. The odds of following through and making money on a new long in that situation, whether a day trade or especially a swing trade, the odds diminished dramatically. So it wasn't a good trade that in that particular moment because of all of those things. How many days in a row? What, how, what's, what did it do the last time it got up to that price? How many days in a row did it close strong, close above the open and um, close near the high of the day? And if it closed higher that one more day, what did that mean for profit potential? So I really implore you to dig deep into every trade that you make and just go one step deeper and say, okay, what are the odds of me actually hitting my profit target? Not picking a number out of, out, of, out of the air and saying, I'm only taking trades with four to one risk reward ratio or three to one risk reward ratio. Yeah, absolutely do that. I'm not saying don't do that. But what I am saying is to really ask yourself, why do I think I'm going to hit the four? Why do I think I'm going to hit my reward potential? And when you start coming back with some weak answers, don't take the trade. It's those trades that are going to make you a much better and much more profitable trader by staying away from those trades that are break even at best and then focusing on the trades where you build a really solid argument. And that's when you really start to have some magic happen in your trading account. If you have any comments, absolutely leave, uh, leave them below the video. Please give us a thumbs up if you find these videos helpful. And please subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Have a great day, everybody.